Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this video, I'd like to share an amazing new tool with you. This is Power Mesh, a new feature of Mocha Pro. Mesh tracking allows us to place graphics organically onto deforming surfaces. I'm talking faces, I'm talking fabric, all the surfaces that are hard to stick to and reliably track. Anything that bends, flexes, and warps, we can stick things on it so it appears so natural, so organic, so seamless, you'd be forgiven for thinking it's magic. So let's power it up and see if this will mesh with your workflow. So mesh warping allows us to easily stick objects on uneven surfaces, uh, stuff like this t-shirt perhaps. So let's say we're gonna insert something on here, uh, probably like the D-A-N-C-E music video from 2011. And you know, Justice fans, correct me in the comments, but with this clip selected, we're gonna add the Mocha Pro effect on here. So you can grab that from your effects and presets, drop it on here. Then we can launch the Mocha interface from inside the effect. And this is where the magic happens. We start by making a spline on the area that we want things to stick. So we just grab the X spline tool, click around, and then right click to close the path. Wonderful. Now, before we track, I just want to make sure that this area won't get intersected by anything strange, like a hand or areas of strong shadow, because the mesh is going to be based on texture. So anything that disrupts or obscures that texture, uh, we want to remove that from the calculation. Uh, we can do that by putting splines over those nasty obscuring hands. I'm just gonna manual those in some rough shapes really quick. So with that done, we want to lay the mesh on here. And I'll tell Mocha down here that I'm interested in tracking some mesh with this little checkbox. And critically, we want this mesh layer to be below the hands so that it'll ignore those kind of blobs that I put out there. Then we just need to dial in how the mesh should be generated. You might want some automatic triangles uh, for more organic results, or maybe you want a regular grid. Just make sure you tap generate when you change all of your options. But I want you to look really close in here. See all these little points? The more of these we have, the more nuanced our mesh is gonna be, but the longer it's gonna take to calculate. So you may need to find a balance that works for your shot. And you can always add more points and more specific points using the mesh tools up here. I'm happy with the regular grid and I'll just kind of decrease the size here, hit generate again. We are ready to let the tracking happen. While we wait, I do want to say that if you like what you see here and you want to get some mocha in your life, then there are links to get a license for this lovely bit of kit right here in the description below. And if you have new watching this thing around Black Friday, Cyber Monday, American Thanksgiving time, well, there is a sale going on. So please avail yourself of those savings at Boris FX. And look at that, we're done. So <laughs> magic of editing. As we scrub through here, we can see how well these points stuck on the surface as I'm plucking at the fabric or shifting around. I'm pretty happy with the data that it's generated, so let's move that data into After Effects. We want to use the Stabilize module down here to push the deformations into After Effects. So we'll be going to the first frame here, going into the Stabilize tab here, choosing Unwarp and selecting High Quality. One final thing we have to do though, we need to basically make one of these frames the reference frame. That's why I moved the playhead back to the beginning here. And to make this deformation work, we're gonna need the surface to interpret this thing how we expect. So I'm gonna show the planar surface by clicking this button up here. And then I'm gonna expand that surface to the frame bounds, clicking this other button. This little change will make the deformation apply to the entire frame when we apply it on the next step. So make sure you don't skip this critical thing, expanding, expanding this blue box out to the size of the entire frame. Now we should be good to go. So let's save and close down Mocha and then we're gonna go back into After Effects. So now we need to have something to put on the shirt. And I have this little comp of my logo, so I'll bring that down here. I've animated the letters in a very simple way. We don't really need to talk about that. This could be literally anything, anything at all. But whatever we wanna put on here, let's put our playhead to that reference frame, kind of arrange this where we want it. Okay, and I'm happy with that location. So now I'm going to pre-compose this logo. And if there were other elements we wanted to put on here, we'd pre-compose those along with it. And we're gonna make sure that we're moving all the attributes to the new comp, meaning that this comp I just made is gonna have the same frame size as this comp here where the data is coming from. Making sure these things line up is gonna be important. 
So now here comes the magic trick. I'm gonna copy that Mocha plugin effect. I'm gonna paste it onto the new comp, the things that are gonna live on the shirt. So all of that data we made, all that tracking mesh stuff lives inside this instance of the effect as well. Then we're gonna twirl in here to module renders. We're gonna click this little checkbox because we would like to see one of those renders, please. And we're gonna choose stabilize warp. So we unwarped it inside of Mocha, and now we're gonna warp out here. See how that kind of works? And then we get to observe the magic. Look at that pull, look at that snapback. Ooh, so smooth, so simple, but it's just that easy. So now we get to go in here and we can treat up this comp, which is warping along however we like. I'm gonna put in a little fractal noise, very small scale in there, pretty dark, just to help kind of blend this with my Heather Gray t-shirt. Then we're gonna go back out here, set this layer to multiply. Blending modes are our friend, and then we're just gonna dial down the opacity, and that should do it. If only things were always this easy. In particular, I had this one job once where we needed to put some fire on some American NCAA football boys, and we didn't have much time to nail down a particle sim or to put 3D tracked points on people, but this is a very similar shot to what we were working with, and I'm gonna show you just how much time the power mesh saves us in our workflow here. This guy's being nice and stable, nice and planar. Oh, and then he starts twisting. Oh no, why must he twist himself towards the camera? How am I gonna track fire on his torso if he's moving around like this? But don't despair, power mesh is here. We're gonna use the same method as before, which I'm gonna skip over because we literally just did that. And we're gonna get our mesh tracked on here, but Instead of using the mesh to warp things, I have other plans. I'm gonna take this mesh and we're gonna go back into After Effects. I'm gonna turn this mesh into nulls that are gonna follow all those wee little points that are out on that mesh. And I really just need a few of them, a few select key points out here that I'm gonna to use to drive a puppet pin tool to get some fire elements to seem to stick to little parts of his body. Pretty clever, right? This is some high angle fire from Action VFX. I think that'll work pretty well. And you can see these little fingers, these little strands of fire kind of emanating. That's gonna work great for what I'm after here. So I'm gonna position that fire kind of close to where I want. Then we're gonna pre-compose this. Again, moving all the attributes to the new comp. Now things can get messy with pins and relative space. So I'm just gonna start by making this this fresh comp here big enough so that we can see all the fire. We wanna see all the fire in here. And then I'm gonna make a black solid since I intend to use like add or screen to composite this back with the original. So we should be good, should be good set up with this. So now we're gonna go back to that previous comp. I'm gonna drop down puppet pins on or near where those nulls are at. Now this can be a mildly time consuming process of parenting the position of the pin to the position of the null, making sure you get the right ones lined up. And once you're done, you may need to adjust the layer a little bit because the size difference between the comp and the frame. But now have a look at this. Ooh-wee, those pins are following the points and it's like the flames are stuck right on the back. They're squishy and they're twisting as he's moving. It's like the fire is really coming off of his, I guess this is called a jersey maybe. Now I'm just gonna drop a couple more pins towards the top of the fire to help kind of bend and shape it so the fire seems to be flowing you know, vertically as heat rises, and uh, then we are done. I, I kind of weep for all the hours spent uh, in the past after seeing the tools of the present. It's a common, common feeling. But don't be too sad, you can get your hands on Power Mesh with Mocha Pro, uh, as long as you're up to date with your license. So again, please enjoy using the link in the description to uh, go make that happen. I hope you've enjoyed learning about this new tool. The Power Mesh is also great for assisting in rotoscoping complex organic forms, since it's gonna move and deform as those shapes move and deform. It has heaps of other applications that you'll be spending more time on the creative parts of compositing and less time on the tracking parts, which always makes for better results. If you've enjoyed learning about this kind of thing, do subscribe. We get up new tutorials all the time on all kinds of things about After Effects, motion design, visual effects topics. Make sure you turn on notifications so you don't miss a thing. And if you have any questions, do let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you around the internet.